Hi, this is Daniel Hens with the Flood Control District of Maricopa County, and we're here to talk about the 2020 Monsoon Outlook. The season officially runs from June 15th to September 30th. If you've lived here in the valley, you know that even though when we get to Monday on June 15th, it's still gonna be hot and dry. So what we call the onset, or when thunderstorms and moisture actually arrive up into this part of the state, usually it doesn't happen until later. In fact, it's usually around July 7th or the 4th of July weekend. And the way that used to be measured was three consecutive days with a dew point of 55 degrees, and that would officially kick off the monsoon. But now we've just to basically try and get the state all in unison, June 15th to September 30th. So when it comes to how much rain we get, through the monsoon. This part of Arizona, it's usually about 30 to 40% of their total for the year. And when measured at Phoenix Sky Harbor, the official monitoring station for Phoenix, that comes out 2.71 inches. But then if we look at all of the rain that falls on average around the entire county, it's actually closer to three inches. Our, our 30 year average here is 2.97 inches. What you're looking at here is the last 37 years worth of rainfall for monsoon seasons. This is data when averaged across all of our alert gauges and you can see it actually has this kind of roller coaster look. The far left of the graph is 1983. The far right was last season in 2019. You can see some years that, again, we're well above that average of 2.97. Some years we're below. There's no really kind of rhyme or reason to it. Um, of note, it's always like to point out 2014 there, we actually had uh, nearly seven inches of rain, which is almost double, no, more than double than what we typically see. Um, and then the last few years, we've had a couple of drier than normal years, then right around normal for 27 and 18. And then again, a really dry year in 2019, actually at the airport, we received 0.66 inches of rain, which was very, very dry. Um, but when averaged across the county, because we had a late season, uh, big major event, we got closer to normal. We were just over two and a half inches. Let's take a look at the monsoon in general and the basics principles behind what's going on here. Again, for any of you that aren't familiar or you just moved to the valley, this is a nice crash course on how the monsoon actually works. In general, for most of the year, winds blow from west to east, our rainfall comes from large upper level low pressure disturbances that move off the Pacific and across the state. We get cold fronts, rain, snow up in the higher terrain. However, when we go to the North American monsoon in the summer, July through September, the winds actually change from more out of the south to southeast. The main driver behind that is intense heating during the summer months across central Mexico. It actually helps drive a 500 millibar ridge north up into the desert southwest. Clockwise flow around that high helps to bring moisture north into Arizona from Mexico as well as the Gulf of Mexico. As well, we also get this thermal heat low in the southwest part of Arizona that moves moisture north into Arizona out of the Gulf of uh, California. So when you get enough moisture, you finally get thunderstorms over the higher terrain. And eventually when we get enough of the moisture, when we have some of the forcing mechanisms like outflow boundaries from the higher terrain, that can actually get us thunderstorms down here in the valley. That's what we like to see. But the main feature of this is that a monsoon ridge. That ridge location is really key in determining uh, favorable patterns for us to see rain. We have four historical favorable ridge locations. So the, the, the setup I just described is what we call our four corners high, and it's most typically seen in the, the main part of the monsoon. But we can also see, for example, the Great Basin High, which is right here, where the ridge kind of shifts further north and west, maybe setting up over Las Vegas. And that's actually when we tend to see a lot of our rim to valley setups. So the big intense thunderstorms up across uh, Gila County that make their way down into the valley in the evening. We typically tend to see lots of wind and heavy rain events. Then we also have what's called the trapping high here, where we may have some upper level disturbance that actually gets stuck across southern Arizona. Again, increased moisture forcing from that event can help drive lots of thunderstorms, we can tend to see lots of flooding. And then what we have is our West Texas, New Mexico high, which is this one here on the bottom left. And that's kind of like, we call that the granddaddy of them all. It's, it's all or nothing pattern. So usually the beginning of the monsoon and the end of the monsoon, we'll see this kind of pattern where we have southwesterly flow, we may or may not have moisture, but as we get later into the season, this pattern is actually very conducive for pulling moisture from hurricanes or tropical systems up from the Gulf of California and into Arizona, as well as giving early season uh, low pressure systems can actually get pulled even while we're still in our monsoon pattern. We can get significant rain events. Let's take a look at the NOAA Climate Prediction Center, their three month outlook for July, August, and September. And so what you're seeing on the map right here is actually, it's a three category outlook. And so the one that's actually on the map has to do with precipitation. And basically what this map is saying is that there's equal chances for above, below, or normal rainfall. 
So that's not really telling us a whole lot, unfortunately, because again, as far as the larger scale parameters they may not be seeing, what you're seeing from this pie chart right here, you're seeing actually a pretty strong signal for above normal temperatures through July, August, and September, actually favored by 70% uh, versus only a 28% chance of being near, near normal and nearly a 0% and only three for below normal. So it looks like wetter than normal conditions are expected for the monsoon. But again, this is gonna be averaged across three months. And so let's take a little dive into some other factors that might tell us a little bit more what we might see on the weekly to monthly time scale. Maybe get a little more, more information in terms of rainfall. The first factor that we like to look at uh, is El Nino. So the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And I've got two uh, maps up on here. And the one that you're seeing on the top, on the right hand side, you're actually looking at sea surface temperature anomalies in the equatorial Pacific. The oranges and the yellows, those are saying warmer than average temperatures. The blues um, are colder than average and white is near normal. And so what you can see actually is that we're in a Enzo neutral phase. So we're not El Nino, we're not La Nina. We're actually kind of just sitting in the middle phase. And if we look out to forecasts moving over the next three months, six months through the end of the year, it's actually stating that uh, Enzo neutral to La Nina is actually being favored to the fall and the winter. So this climate signal is typically a lot weaker in the summer, but it becomes more important as we get into the fall and the winter. And I'm gonna try and explain that a little bit more here with this next slide. What you're looking at here is a box and whiskers plot for July, August, September rainfall across Climate Division 96. And that's basically the area that makes up South Central Arizona. So from Yuma into the Phoenix Valley, up into Gila County, down to parts of Pinal, and then as far north as parts of uh, Yavapai County. And so what we can see here is in general, there's not a whole lot of change between El Nino, neutral or La Nina years. However, there's a little bit of change when it comes to the distribution or range of outcomes. When we're in neutral or even La Nina years, we tend to see there, there's a possibility of, again, anything can happen. It can be much drier, normal or much wetter, but that range of outcomes seems to be expanded. And we tend to see some of our wettest years when we're neutral in La Nina. The next thing we like to look at is antecedent rainfall. So what basically, what kind of winter, previous winter we had, not just across the desert southwest, but across the entire western United States. And so what you can see on this map is a large area of the desert southwest, as well as the rock, the lower and central Rockies, as well as across Nevada, and even into California, it was very, very dry. We did actually happen to have a pretty wet uh, winter season down across central and southern Arizona. But again, the higher terrain areas were much, much drier. Um, to our north. And then if we look in the Pacific Northwest, you can see lots of greens on there again, signaling that it was above normal rainfall. And so the reason I show you this map is there's been a, bu a bunch of research that shows when we tend to have uh, wet Pacific Northwest winters and drier winters down in the desert Southwest and Great Basin region, we tend to actually see an earlier start to the monsoon, giving us a larger number of days where we potentially could see rain. So we actually tend to see a little bit more uh, rain on these types of setups. So that's one clue. Now what you're looking at here is a 90 day loop. So you can see North America, South America, the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean right here behind me. And you're looking at sea surface temperature anomalies. Again, the blues mean colder than average. The oranges and yellows and reds mean warmer than average. We can focus it on two areas. Here's the equatorial Pacific, where again, influences from El Nino. And you can actually see we go from kind of above average to slowly trending to neutral to even maybe colder than average. So that signal of La Nina starting to take shape may be happening. The second area I want you to focus in on is that oval, and that's highlighting the Gulf of California. You can see when we start out in March and April, and even into a little bit of May, those temperatures are all colder than average, but they make a flip-flop, and they're actually getting much, much warmer than average, and you can see by the end of the loop. And that'll play right now here, as you can see, we're going to colder than average, to near normal, to much warmer than average as we get into May. So we're gonna highlight that region right now, and again, this is kind of a zoomed up look right at the Gulf of California. Again, we're just looking at absolute temperatures now, not sea surface temperature anomalies. And the main reason I wanna bring this up is we like to focus on this northern part of the Gulf of California. There's been a significant amount of research that's been done that says as soon as those temperatures in that northern part of the Gulf exceed 27.5 degrees Celsius, that's when we get over 90% of our rain for the summer monsoon. Once that number gets over 28.5, we get over 80%. So basically that 27 to 28 range is our key that uh, the monsoon actually tends to get going within a week to maybe two weeks after we reach that threshold. Currently, we're sitting about 24 to 25 degrees uh, Celsius. This time of year, that part of the Gulf warms about one to two degrees per week, 
which means in another couple of weeks, which would put us in late June, we'll actually be ready and set to go for that initial surge of moisture. So that's another clue potentially about an early start to the monsoon. And so our last piece of information we want to look at here is our official uh, hurricane outlook. And this is again put out by NOAA's National Hurricane Center, and this is for the Eastern North Pacific. So for 2020, they're predicting a near or below normal favored outcome for hurricanes. So if you remember, we've actually had really active seasons the last couple of years in 2016, 2017, 2018. Last year was closer to normal. So typically what we end up seeing is somewhere on the 15 named storms, eight hurricanes, four of which are major. This year, they're expecting something in the 11 to 18 range, five of 10 of which could be hurricanes and one to five, which could be major. So again, we've had these really active seasons before. This season is predicted to be maybe closer to average or even below average. Um, that can be important, again, as we said, when we go to the later part of the monsoon season, we start to get intrusions of moisture in the desert southwest. They can be a major factor for additional rainfall. So lowering the odds of us possibly seeing, you know, again, a, a storm tends to lower our odds in terms of potential rainfall. But again, it's only one little piece of the puzzle. With all of that combined, um, we talked about NOAA's Climate Prediction Center forecast saying above normal temperatures. We also talked about how they were expecting you know, equal chances for above, below, or right near normal uh, rainfall. So again, that wasn't telling us a whole lot. So we kind of dove a little bit deeper into the four factors we always like to look at. And from that, we're anticipating an earlier onset than normal. So we expect that intrusion, an initial intrusion of moisture first rounds of those storms to actually get going before that July 7th um, kind of cutoff. And also, we're hoping that this early onset should help offset maybe what might end up being a lower uh, East Pack hurricane season. And so we're gonna go with a near normal rainfall for the monsoon. And what that basically means is 90 to maybe 110% of average. So that would be, you know, 2.7 inches to 3.3 inches when averaged across all of Maricopa County. So again, we're still expecting a busier season than last year, but maybe not quite a 2014. A couple other points I just wanna mention. It only takes one or two heavy rain events to reach the historical monsoon uh, rainfall quota. Uh, any location in the Phoenix Valley is subject to flooding or flash flooding if enough rain falls um, in the proper duration. We don't need a big significant event. It can be very localized to your particular area, maybe your neighborhood. So you always wanna keep that in the back of your mind. Now is the time to prepare and we have a large amount of information on our website, as well as with our partners, NOAA National Weather Service, and again, following our, our different feeds. So with that, that's the outlook for the year. Let's all hope for rain.